Hi and welcome to this DCP Web Blender 2.8 Smoke Simulation Beginners Tutorial. So if you haven't used Blender 2.8 before, I'll put some links in the YouTube description which will give you access to a beginner's guide tutorial. So I advise you to watch that first. It will show you how to A, install the software and B, how to create a basic text animation. Pretty good effects as well. So go through that tutorial first if you haven't used Blender before. Otherwise you can continue with this tutorial. So we'll open up Blender and let's first of all just open up Blender and we'll click on general here we'll go to file save as and in this folder on my desktop I'm just going to call it smoke-01 and we'll click save we'll click on the, the cube here and delete it we'll press shift A and we'll insert a UV sphere so we've got a sphere here we'll press S on the keyboard and we'll scale it down and then we use the move tool to move it up a little bit like this. Now we're going to go to object and we're going to go to quick effects and smoke. So let's just file save. So if we click the play button, basically what Blender has done is made the sphere the emitter of the smoke and this yellow rectangle cube here is the domain where the smoke will appear. So when we click play, Let's uh, pause this, go to the first frame, click play. You see the smoke starts to appear. If you click on the um, on this object and you move it around, the smoke will appear within the realms of this domain. If you move the sphere outside of the domain, the smoke will stop being emitted, right? This is just like a trail of the original smoke. So if when it gets back to the first frame, you see there's no smoke. As soon as we move it inside the domain, you see the smoke starts to appear. So the first thing we want to do is increase the size of this domain. So let's we can click on the collections here and then click on smoke domain that will select it or you can just click on it and we're going to press S to scale but we want to scale it on the width. We want to make it wider and we that's the Y, right? So we press S to scale and then press Y to scale it on the width and we're going to increase it to something like this size here. So now we can see it's much wider. And if we were to go back to the first frame and click play and then click on the sphere and move it around, now the domain is bigger. So the smoke will be generated within the realms of this domain. OK, so the first thing we want to do is pause this and go back to the first frame. So we jump back to the very first frame and we're going to press number seven on our keyboard. So number seven takes us to the top view. Let's go to file save and we will. In fact, what we'll do is press number number one and so we press number one on our keyboard that takes us to the front orthographic and we want to pull this object down a little bit we want to get it close to the floor so see this red line this is actually representing the floor space here you could say almost so if we press number one we want to move the domain to just above the floor like here if we zoom in can you see it's just above the floor something like this probably bring it down just a touch so something like this that should be fine and then this sphere we want to move that down as well so around here and then we want to bring it closer to the middle something like this we want it quite close to the bottom but not touching the bottom right so you can see there's two gaps here this red line represents the like the, the floor most you can think of it right so let's pan out and we've got our object there we're going to press number seven to get to the top view and we're going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to move this sphere outside of the domain to around this position here it's almost like one square away and this black box you can just about see it if i zoom in this black box that's the domain and we want to animate this sphere to move across the domain to generate the smoke so we'll press the letter i on our keyboard and we're going to do a location rotation and scale so we'll click that and it puts in a keyframe here and we're going to click on the record button and we'll move to frame 30 and on frame 30 we're going to move the object to exactly the opposite location roughly the opposite location here then we'll move to frame 60 and we'll move it back again to roughly the same location and then we'll go to frame 90 and move that back across to this location here and that's about it so we can click the record button and we can pan around using our middle mouse wheel, go back to the first frame and now we can see the smoke gets emitted like this across the object. 
What we'll do for now is set the end frame to 90 so that we can do a looping sequence. So when we go to the first frame and play, it's just going to loop this animation. So when we're experimenting with the um, smoke, we can see what's actually happening. Okay, so we can leave the smoke playing like this and we're going to click on the smoke domain. So it's selected and then we'll go to the physics here. So inside physics, there's quite a few different options. For now, we're going to set the subdivision to something like uh, 128. And you can see that's going to slow down the animation a little bit, right? But it's okay. You can see the frames per second. After it's done, the, the first pass, it should speed up because Blender's worked out the calculations here. And time scale. So when you hover over it, it says just simulation speed. So if we increase this, the smoke will flow faster. And if, you, if it kind of like judders a little bit, that's Blender doing the calculations. So you have to give it a bit of time to calculate everything. And then you can see the smoke simulation here. And maybe what we'll do is just uh, at this end frame, maybe we set it to 120. So it's got a little bit of time for the smoke to flow at the end. And then we can see what, how, that's, how the, the settings are affecting it. You can see at the end it's going to flow a little bit more, right? Okay, so that's that setting. So we'll leave it at a high setting. But if you leave it at a really low setting, so we bring it right down, you'll see the flow of the smoke is much slower. So you can do that if you want. If you want slow smoke, then that's what you want. That's what you get. But if you want it to be a bit faster and you get more turbulence and more movement, then we need to set it to, to its highest setting. Okay, so empty space. Here it says... Um, and this is for like optimizing cache and rendering, right? So if we increase this, I believe that helps with um, after rendering, it helps to do some calculations to speed up the rendering. I'm not quite sure. I need to read up about this setting. I'm just being experiment with Blender at the moment, this particular version, and just seeing what we can do with it and how we can, you know, just play around with smoke and fire. And I'm going to do a fire tutorial later. Um, so I've done a few tutorials so far, so I'm just playing around. That's the best way to learn tools sometimes, is just to experiment with them and see what they're capable of doing. And then, you know, sometimes if you do it that way, you just learn what these settings do. But do read about, you should really read up about them on, in the manual as well if you get some time. So density, when we hover over it, it says how much density affects the smoke motion. Higher value results in faster rising smoke. So... If we set this to quite a low value, we see the smoke will actually start to drop to the ground. So that, that might have been good for like a, an exhaust trail in a car or something, right? Could have the smoke just like dropping down from the car exhaust. So if we increase this value, then the smoke should rise faster. Like this. And probably we want to set this to around, I mean, it's up to you really, but I'm going to set it to around 0 0.1. That was kind of its default setting, I think. So we want to rise too quickly, something like this. And then the temperature difference, if we were to reduce this and make it almost uh, a lower temperature, the smoke will rise, but much slower because of the room, it, or you can think of this object as almost like a room, and the temperature inside the room is lower. So we set it to a minus value. In theory, it should rise and then kind of drop a little bit as well at the same time, or just slow down much more. You see, it's taking much more time to leave the ground. So if we even make it more colder, the room, it should stay at the bottom a lot longer now, right? Can you see? So all of these settings can affect the smoke. And you've got to experiment with them uh, to see roughly what sort of effect you want. And I quite like that because the smoke kind of mixes together when it passes backwards and forwards. So this is to do with turbulence, right? So if we increase this setting, it should give it more turbulence or more movement on the smoke as it's over, over its intersecting. So let's see what happens here. So 
maybe that's a bit too much. Let's bring that down. I think something like that would be good. And then the dissolve. So when we take dissolve, it's set to five at the moment. And that means the smoke dissolves very quickly. So if we increase this setting to something around 70, we should be able to see the smoke rising, but it will dissolve a lot quicker than its default setting. So you can experiment with this. It's really down to what you want, right? Uh, let's untick slow and see what happens. If we tick it, it's just slowing it down. I think it's doubling this value basically. <clears throat> so we'll leave it something like this. Okay, let's pause this and go back to the first frame. That's kind of the smoke simulation we want. And what we'll do is click on the sphere here. And the sphere has some physics att attributes as well. So when we click play, um, you've got the surface here. Now, what this is saying is uh, if we move to like this frame here, in fact, let's go to one of the first frames. So here, around here, if we zoom in on this object, this first setting is saying how much smoke should be emitted from around the outside of this object. It's set to 1.5. If we increase that all the way up to 5, go back to the first frame and play, you'll see there's much more smoke being emitted from around the object. So you can experiment with this. You can set it to a low value, or you can set it to a really high value. It's down to your preference, right? So maybe we'll set it to around one and see what that looks like. Or we could set it to a really high value. Let's set it to five, and that's like, biggest setting so let's set this back to 2 I think that was its default setting it was before and then the volume that's how much smoke is it is going to be emitted from inside of this sphere so the first one is the outside this one is the inside so if we set that to something like one for now. Then smoke is emitted from around the object, but also inside of it now as well, in this simulation. Okay, so density. Uh, let's pause this a second. Let's set the density to zero. You can clearly see there's no smoke. So the higher the value this will be, the more smoke will be generated, I assume. So let's set it to that 0 0.1. Now you can just see a little trail behind the object. And the higher we set this setting, the more smoke we're going to generate. The density of the smoke, I assume, right? So if we increase the density and set it to its maximum value one, then it's the most dense that that smoke can be within this particular simulation. So let's look at temperature difference. Temperature difference to ambient temperature. So I assume Blender has a default setting for the temperature. So Obviously, smoke is hot, right? It's got some heat to it because it's, it's normally generally, you know, smoke has heat and that's why it rises. So, if we were to bring down the temperature of this room, the smoke should eventually start to. Let's have a look here. In theory, it should. Let's increase the temperature. One minute. Let's, let's go the other way. <coughs> now, the smoke will stay at the bottom. 
the higher the value the smoke will go down the lower the value the smoke will rise so you can set this if you get like a nice setting let's say about one point let's see what that looks like you can see the smoke is staying more towards the ground now and if we set it to something like 1.0.5 it will rise but it just takes longer so if we set it to its default i think it was at one right maybe let's have a look one yeah i might leave it at one so smoke color i've been having a few problems with this smoke color i don't think it works in this particular render engine um called EV so I'm going to show you another way to get the smoke give it some color I need to go away and do some research into that because I can see it in the viewport here the smoke color you can change it but when you go to render it out later it just doesn't change color so I don't know if there's something to do with this particular version of blender there's something they need to still fix and work on because this is a development version right it's not a completed version but I will show you how to change the color of the smoke using another technique sampling subframes in here it says number of additional samples to be taken between frames to improve the quality of fast moving smoke so let's set this to a high value and in theory we should get a better smoke simulation it should look better the smoke itself then the initial velocity when we set these settings you can see that it has quite an effect on the smoke so it's almost like the object or the movement of this object is affecting how the smoke is rendered here right You can play around with these settings to change how that smoke is affected. It's really down for you to go and experiment with these settings and see, um, you know, what settings are working for you. So I'm going to turn this off for now. I just want the smoke to just trail like this and then kind of intersect and all that good stuff right okay so that's about it for the smoke example and you can go around and play around with those settings and see what effect they have on your particular smoke animation we'll click on the domain and the resolution set to 120 so that should be okay for now um, what we'll do is go to the texture here now we'll go to the material here and in the surface we're going to set it to let's see we're going to set it to principled volume here this setting here and then we're going to go to the render and turn on volumetrics here turn that on and then we can go to the EV render and we can go back to the first frame and play and now we can see the smoke in this view so what we might do is go to the world setting and set the black ground to black and because our white is our smoke is pretty much white we'll be able to see it a bit clearer now and let's go back to the first frame and what we'll do is we will go to Let's have a look here. We're okay here, so let's uh, let's leave this plane for the minute. And what we'll actually do, in fact, what we'll do is we'll go to the first frame and we'll click on the light. So the light source is here at the moment, right? And what we'll do is we'll change it to sunlight and we'll change the color to something like green and we'll play and now our smoke will be green we can reduce the energy we don't want it to be too bright you can experiment with these uh, different types of lighting to get different types of effects probably for now in the world view maybe we'll set it to a lighter colour we can see things a bit better at the minute 
here you can see it's got a bit of green in there and that's down to the light source so we click the light and you can adjust these settings you can increase the energy and get more of effects but I want it to kind of mix in with the, the green and black right something like this okay so let's go to the first frame we've got the light source selected up the top here and we're going to press the record button and we're going to click here on this option here to set a keyframe for the light then we're going to move to frame 15 and on frame 15 we're going to click on the color and change it to something like blue you can change it to whatever color you like and then we'll go from blue to frame 30 and on frame 30 we'll set it to something like red so we might change the energy here as well afterwards we'll go to frame 45 and change it to like a purple color that's all right doesn't matter we'll go to frame 60 and we'll change it to what do we do last purple so let's set it to like a orange and then frame 75 we'll set it to like a dark blue and then maybe frame 90 we'll set it to like a, back to a purple sort of color so if we untick the record go back to the first frame and play now smoke will change color based on the light source you can play around with that and choose whatever settings you want we'll go to some sort of middle frame here something like um, somewhere around here frame 90 something like that 95 so we can see a lot of the smoke first thing we need to actually do is click on the domain and we need to go to the physics settings and we need to go to cache and then we need to set the bake so we're going to have some extra frames here let's set it to around 160 on this timeline because we want the smoke to kind of um let me just recalculate this we want the smoke to flow a little bit at the end right to rise up so we go back to the first frame we we'll set the end frame for the bake to 160 as well and then we'll click bake all dynamics So that will take a few seconds to break. And what Blender is doing is doing the calculations for the smoke and keeping them in a cache. So when we play now, um, let's go to the first frame. When we go to render out these frames, it doesn't have to do all these calculations on the fly. They're already been calculated for us. So when we do the render, it will render out a lot quicker. So let's try and render something so let's render out maybe this frame here and see what it looks like so maybe we'll render it on a black background and see what that looks like right something like this and then we'll go to our samples in the viewport we can set it to around 120 and in the render samples we can set that to around 120 we'll press f12 and then we can see the smoke but the camera isn't really looking at the object from this view so what we want to do is get our view something like this because we want to see it from the front so once we're in this sort of view we can go control alt and zero and that will move the camera to this view if we click on the camera we can now see what the camera sees and what we will do is click here to uh we can even click on wireframe any of these options up at the top here just to see the domain and what the camera sees so we want to move the camera up a little bit so let's go to the object here and you've got the location frames here right so this will move it backwards and forwards and it's a little bit tricky to see here but we want to get the camera to be within the within inside of this domain like 
we don't really want to have blank gaps at the top or on the sides here so we want to move the camera up a little bit so and to the side a little bit so let's move it up to around here really it would be nice if um, the smoke was generated at the bottom here and it rose up and then because it's going to get cut off here you see when we play the the video it, inside of our frame the smoke is going to get cut off here so we want to increase the size of the domain as well so let's click on the domain we want to fill this whole frame and we'll move what we can do is click on the domain we'll move it up a bit so it kind of sits so the, the gap at the top and the gap gap at the bottom here are even and then we can press uh, we want to scale it on the vertical right so that will be let's have a look here so that'll be y x y. i think this will be z axis so if we press s and then z we can scale it to something like this and then if we zoom out a little bit the height of this should be the same height as what the camera sees now so if we go back to the camera you can see if we click on the camera by itself you can see the how much of it's been filled here so if we go back to the first frame and play and really what we need to do really let's go back to this view here uh, let's go back to the first frame here I think uh, let's just check can you see this here is outside of the domain now so only the top part of it is emitting smoke because it's outside it's rolling underneath the domain so what we'll do is we'll click on the domain let's press uh, let's have a look here that's right all for graphic so we can press um, yeah we can press number one on our keyboard we'll press number one and what we'll do is scale it again we'll scale this domain on the height so we'll press s to scale and then we want to press z and then scale it on the height so if we scale it now really the domain should be inside or the object should be moving inside the domain now so let's go back to our camera view and click play we should see a lot more smoke being emitted now, right? Okay, so what we need to do now is just recache that. So we'll go back to, we've got the domain selected. Let's click on it and we free the bake here. Free it. And then bake all dynamics again. So this will take a few seconds to rebake because we're going to need that when we render, I believe. Okay, that's been baked. So let's get to a frame like this and press F12 to render it. And now we can see it's covering the whole frame, like the smoke will flow at the top of this frame. And we can see it like this. And then we can adjust the settings, the, like uh, we can go to the light source. Let's click on the light here. And this is our light source. We can increase the, um, the energy and then render again. And we can see that there's more light hitting this smoke now. So it's much brighter. So it's down to you, it's really down to preferences now, how much energy you want to give. If you give it very little, then you're going to see very little smoke in the frame. But if you want to give it a lot, then you're going to see a lot more. But you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to really overdo the uh, the energy because then it starts to look a bit, a bit fake, let's say, the smoke. So we want to keep the energy low. So maybe something like this or maybe a little bit lower. Let's say something like this. Let's move to another color, so something like orange, and render that. And we can see what the smoke looks like down here okay i'm pretty happy with that let's go to file save 
and we'll go to the first frame. Let's quickly play it, make sure it's all in looking good. It's filling out the frame. So I'm okay with that. We'll go back to the first frame. We'll go to our output here. Let's just check everything's okay in here. This is all good. We'll go to our output. We could increase the render samples, right? So if we increase this to something like uh, 256, and then let's go to one of our frames and render it. Let's say something like here and render. We'll get a better render out of it. It will take longer to render the frame, but it will look cleaner. The smoke will look better. So we'll set it to something like 256. You can even set it higher than that if you want. But we'll leave it like that for now. We'll go to the output and we're going to leave it at 100% frame size. This render frames doesn't really matter because we're going to render it out as um, PNG files. So we'll click on this folder here and we'll go to the desktop. We'll go into the smoke simulation folder where our work is being saved. We'll create a new folder. We'll call it frames. And we'll open up that frames folder, click accept. We'll move it back to the first frame. So it's on the very first frame. And we'll set it to 16 color depth and the compression will leave it at 15. Now all we have to do is go file, save and press control and F12. Now it's gonna render out each frame. You see it's on frame two, frame three. I'm gonna leave this rendering out and I will pause the video or speed it up to show you all the frames being rendered. Maybe I'll just speed it up quickly and then we can see the end result and comp composite the, the final video clip. Okay, so Blender's finished rendering out these frames. Um, we'll close this and we'll minimize this. And then we can go to our folder on our desktop and we can see all of the frames in here for this animation sequence, 160 frames in total. We can see they look pretty good. Let's just click on one. You can see the smoke effect here. And we'll close this and we'll go back to Blender and we're gonna create a video sequence out of this now. So we'll go file save, and we'll click on this little option here, and we'll go to video sequencer. Now we can go to add image sequence, and we'll go to the frames folder, where we stored all our frames. We'll select them all with our mouse. Make sure you select all 160 frames, or how many frames you ever you have. We'll click add image strip, so we can see the video or the frames down here, we'll click here to see the sequence and the preview. So the sequence is below and the preview above. We can scrub through a few frames just to see what's going on. Looks okay. We'll go back to our first frame. And this time we need to change the settings here. So instead of doing PNG file, we're going to do AVI raw. We'll click this option and we can save it into the same folder. It's not a problem. And we will just press control and actually we want to set this to 30 frames, right? We set it to 30 frames a second and we'll press Control F12. So this won't take too long to render out because it's already got the frames, so it's just compositing them into a video sequence. So we'll let this happen and then we'll see the final video. Okay, so we rendered out our final video clip. We can close this. We can just go back to Blender and set it back to the 3D viewport because that's normally what this, this is kind of the default place you'll be when you open the file again. We'll save this, close down Blender. We'll open up our folder and inside there we've got a folder called frames and inside frames we've got now this video. So let's open up the video and we can see the video smoke effect that we created. And if you want, you can click here and then click repeat and it should just loop. So watch it a few times and 
you know, we could have improved this quite a lot in a lot of different ways, but without knowing how to create it in the first place, it's going to be quite difficult to uh, improve something if you don't know how to make it in the first place. So I would have probably let the smoke flow at the end all the way off, off the frame. So to, for it to go to a black frame and we could have put some sort of object behind the smoke, maybe like a logo or something like that. And as the smoke flows across it, the logo could appear from the background, right? We could do something like that, but we need to know how to create this smoke first. Maybe the colors were a bit iffy. Maybe we should just pick one color rather than having it in different colors, but at least you know how to do that now. Um, I'm going to go and experiment more with the smoke tool and try and make up some more tutorials and see how we can use the smoke to do other things. Maybe we'll make some smoke text or something like this. Or we'll play around with it. Maybe we can get the smoke to collide against another object. So if we had like a logo in there, maybe the smoke will hit the logo and flow around it or something like this. Maybe we can do something like that. So I'll play around a bit more with Blender, but at least we've created this smoke simulation and we know how to do that now. Okay, we'll close this down. We'll close this and I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.